market in the world. And that is something that uh, is really anchored by the WTO uh, at present. Now, let me now uh, throw open the floor for discussion to the audience. The floor is open. Yes, please. Hi, um, Amar Bhattacharya. So I had a question for uh, Saurabh. Um, uh, what is the role of the G20, you think, uh, on with respect to the investment issue, uh, as you know, in the in the Chinese year, there was an attempt to write up some guiding principles, uh, and of, you know, and the G20 has played a key role on BEPS. Uh, but going forward, do you see a role of the G20 at all in the investment issues? Yeah, I'll take. Uh, we'll take two more questions before uh, asking the panelists to. But Yes, Suman. Yeah, uh, Suman Berry, um, fascinating presentations. But uh, if I could ask uh, a bit more on, um, on Indian uh, perspectives. So there was uh, some, uh, if you like, regret that TPP, as it, uh, from Sebastian, that TPP uh, did not make it to the finish line because of the change in the US. Um, I mean, the US was very, uh, uh, under, under President Obama, talked about high quality trade agreements, etc. Whereas uh, I think the Indian view had always been that uh, these were, as it were, um, unacceptable intrusions into aspects of domestic policy, be it environment, etc. On the other hand, Saurabh has also talked about the importance of FDI and people like Richard Baldwin have talked about the new style trade agreements as being ways of providing comfort to foreign investors because, uh, uh, because of the deeper integration that you talked about. So could either of you indicate to us whether we are ready to join the high quality bandwagon or whether the attitude of India to what in the old days was called the Singapore issues remains uh, implacable opposition? Thank you. Yes, please. Good morning, and uh, thank you very much for these um, very interesting presentations. I um, also have a question for Mr. Gard, building on um, uh, on the question of Amar Bhattacharya. Um, the, the approach of India towards uh, investment facilitation that was the um, the focus of the German uh, G20 presidency this year um, is, um, is is a rather skeptical one. If if I read uh, um, the news correctly, you've been um, very much against um, um, having uh, further commitments on investment uh, facilitation in the uh, context of the trade and investment working group. So what are your expectations uh, for the Hamburg summit, but also for the, um, uh, for the uh, ministerial conference that is coming up in Buenos Aires, where many countries, many emerging countries um, as well, are pushing for investment facilitation as an additional component of the WTO, WTO negotiations? Yeah, I think I can now turn to the pan panelists for their views and response. Sure. I think most of the uh, questions are addressed on the India's uh, situ on India's situation. So, sure. Sure. Mr. Garg. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm not too sure whether uh, uh, this would be the right forum for me to talk about what India's policy would be because. Uh, uh, that would be uh, done at the appropriate time by the appropriate people. But uh, what I can definitely say, what has been the stand up till now, uh, which would in a way address all the three questions, whether it's on the role of G20 or on the Singapore issues or the investment facilitation, and which I also probably alluded to while uh, in my, that um, broadly India has been opposed to any uh, multilateral, uh, um, uh, what should I say, um, work or agreement on investment related issues. We feel that they are uh, extremely intrusive into the domestic economy. They are uh, uh, intertwined with local domestic policy issues and any uh, restrictions on regulatory space or policy making space as far as investment is concerned doesn't remain only for foreign investors but it also impacts domestic uh, investments. And um, uh, we have assured 
uh, non-discrimination of treatment between foreign and domestic investors. Uh, we uh, have assured uh, minimum uh, fair standards, et cetera, of treatment. Uh, given that background, that's been the policy, but I really wouldn't like to get into specific, uh, what would be the uh, specific uh, decisions or policies in specific meetings uh, that may be beyond my mandate and my remit. But uh, I don't know whether this answers your questions, but broadly that has been the stance of India over the past two decades, and I don't expect it to change uh, in the next few uh, years. <coughs> Would uh, any of you uh, like to add anything? Just on the question whether India is ready for these high quality trade agreements, I just published a paper on salvaging the TPP, so I tried to an an analyze which parts of the TPP could be maybe brought to the WTO and multilateralized, and I find that there are very few chapters that will probably um, be ready to be brought to Geneva, um, but I think that the TVP breaks new ground in terms of uh, covering topics that are now very important for international trade, like, for example, e-commerce, also a very important topic for India, biologicals, then state-owned enterprise, and so I think the topics that are covered are very important to be now discussed either in Geneva or also in, in a regional trade agreement like uh, RCEP. But I think the, the current text of TPP is not appropriate for uh, the approval by uh, countries like India. I think there needs a lot of uh, renegotiations. I think the only chapter that could survive is, for example, on, on cyber security, where there are some, um, for example, provisions on consumer protection. But I think all other chapters, they, they need a considerable re um, think uh, by by all the trading partners. Could I just, uh, with the chairman's permission, would you say that this is, that India has many more difficulties than China with the existing text? Uh, I, I don't think that you have more, but I think different ones, but uh, both China and India will never sign on the existing text. Okay. Let us have a second round now. Starting with. I'm Rajiv Yadav. I have mainly my question addressed to Sebastian and Mathas. Since we are talking about view from the G20 countries, would you agree that, or how far do you agree that the blame that is being laid at the door of trade or liberalization also results from inability to some of the developed economies to manage their domestic policies, especially with relation to taxation and other economic measures, including labor policies, which has resulted in squid inequality coming to the fore in these societies, which they have not been able to address. And it is easier to lay the blame at the door of the trade or the globalization. Because when we talk of the issues that have been talked in the session here, which relate to labor, education, health, urbanization, most of these issues relate to within a country to their political economy and their domestic policies. So is it an inept handling of the domestic policies that has resulted in this situation, where by it is easy to lay the blame at the door of the trade or the globalization. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, addressed to Mathias and Sebastian. What do you think uh, explains, uh, what are the sources of the discontent that laid in to uh, Trump victory uh, in the United States. Not really, not really extending on this last question, but I, what I, I just wanted to 
a remark upon this graph which Matthias Helpler showed, this perception of trade and relationship between trade and income. And it is really remarkable how um, countries which, ha which ha not only have been systematically uh, make, I mean, gaining a lot of wealth from trade, but continue to do so, especially Germany, where I come from, is that I mean, how bad the, how bad the um, perception of of trade as a generator of wealth seems to have been become even from a country like Germany, even in a country like Germany, uh, that is uh, one of those who have really gained from the globalization of the last 20, 20 years or so. Um, by the way, I'm Axel Hanna Sievers, Heinrich Böll Foundation, the Green German Foundation here in Delhi. So I, again, I think I have to to uh, start with my the comments that I, I made at the beginning, that uh, my opinions are personal, and and, and in this regard, I would say uh, I would give an answer that probably is very disappointing. I think that the the the, the scenarios uh, or, or the the reasons why or, or the reasons behind what we have se we are seeing in the world today are very complex and depends a lot on the different countries, and I think it's it would be very um, I, I don't think I have the, the full knowledge to, to provide a, a convincing answer of the different facts that are influencing currently the situation. Thank you. My comments are also my personal opinion, but I try to <laughs> go a little bit further. Um, I think the first question about um, the, the unresolved domestic issues, it's true, yeah, that in a lot of European countries um, we didn't tackle uh, certain issues, especially in the labor market, which made the, 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 the adjustment to trade opening very difficult. People, maybe we, we overestimated how uh, easily people can move jobs and um, so, of course, you're, you're right in, in saying that um, the developed countries now when they now take more protectionist measures, this reflects the, uh, the inability to, to deal with uh, certain domestic problems. About the source of discontent uh, that led to Trump's victory, um, I mean, so much, has, so much ink has been spilled on this question, and, uh, but certainly the, this trade issue um, is important. However, I think a lot of people have uh, a little bit underestimated the impact that, for example, uh, the withdrawal uh, from NAFTA might have. We, we, we know that in, in the Midwest, a lot of farmers, they depend on these exports to Canada and also to Mexico. Now they're kind of uh, surprised that there could, could be a very ne negative impact of um, um, this uh, withdrawal from NAFTA or, or the renegotiations from NAFTA on uh, their income. Uh, the perception of trade in Germany, yeah, I think, um, it's uh, surprising because Germany has benefited a lot f from trade and also from uh, the weak uh, euro. And I think it shows also that uh, we, we need to better explain uh, the benefits of trade. Uh, trade is, is a very powerful force and we need to manage this uh, force uh, very carefully and make sure that uh, it's well explained and also people um, benefit from, from trade. Yeah, thank you. If you touched uh, the point made by the question asked by Kirit Saparik about what led to the um, backlash in the United States, which uh, put the, which influenced the presidential elections. Midwest is something. Uh, only on personal opinion. You, you need to watch CNN. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think certain parts of the U.S. Uh, which had uh, manufacturing industries uh, were affected by the changes in competitiveness of uh, countries in those manufacturing industries, and they were the the root cause of the uh, the 
the dissatisfaction with the economic policies, open economic policies, followed uh, in United States for a long time. So that was the beginning. And then I think more we'll know as things unfold uh, as to what really uh, caused this type of uh, change in the US public opinion thinking. Yes, please. Since I sit in uh, Washington, D.C., let me uh, add a little bit to, uh, on that question. So the, the difficulty in this issue is uh, distinguishing between trade and technology. Uh, there, has been, exactly. uh, there has been a lot of loss of jobs um, you know, in the U.S. and, uh, uh, and uh, certainly uh, the phenomena of a blue-collar, uh, blue displaced workers in the Midwest has figured very, very prominently. Putting the blame uh, entirely on the doorsteps of trade uh, is difficult. Uh, and, you know, there, it's very easy to make a scapegoat out of Chinese imports, etc. cetera. Uh, but, you know, that's, uh, that's the reality. The second point I would make is, uh, you know, the decision by the U.S. now to withdraw from NAFTA will preoccupy this administration in a way that will keep its attention entirely focused on that issue, because NAFTA is not just about commodities, it's actually about intra-firm relations. Uh, and it's going to be very, very complicated to undo NAFTA. So I think in the US right now, uh, this kind of, uh, the, and interestingly, as uh, you know, each foreign leader comes to the US, there is a recognition of the deep integration that takes place that happened with President, uh, with Prime Minister Abe, it happened with President Xi Jinping. So clearly uh, the, 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 the people who benefit from trade haven't spoken out as ma much, and that's also very much a kind of a heartland, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the new economy and the industrial, new industrial economy. So the divisions here are quite complicated, but it is really is at the center of, of, uh, of America uh, in the old industrial belt where they, the dissat dissatisfaction is the greatest. I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a point that is being repeatedly made by the economic leaders, leaders of the economy in the United States, that job losses have been due to technology rather than to uh, trade. And uh, the other point also that you make is valid. I think we are looking at an evolving situation, uh, even on US policy, because uh, if we go by the evidence of what happened to their thinking on China, when they were saying certain things about China being a currency manipulator and so on and so forth. But on currency, the first thing that the current administration came out with was that there is no country which is manipulating currencies. Uh, similarly, on NAFTA, we will look uh, expectantly uh, as to what happens. I think uh, a, a realization will come about uh, the harm that could be done uh, to the economies of all the participating countries in view of the level of integration that has taken place between among them and between them, uh, also through the mechanisms of NAFTA. Kirit, you wanted the floor. Yeah, after that. If I, if I'm Actually, sorry. I wanted to raise the same Just issue in saying is what role has technology played uh, uh, in, in displacing employment in the U.S. And in a sense, uh, Obama even used uh, to blame Bangalore for it. So I think this is a somewhat mixed up with trade of a different kind. Uh, but certainly I think uh, technology is a very important factor for the dissatisfaction that may have caused. Sebastian, sorry. 
I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but uh, I would like to go back to the point with, uh, raised with regard to NAFTA and, and, and what I, I mentioned to me, uh, to, uh, sorry, during my presentation with regard to the kind of policies that countries may follow, because I think that the, this, the, the comment about NAFTA shows how countries can make, create structures that somehow uh, are at the end of the day insurance policies and it's very difficult to undo what, what has been created. Uh, and I think that that's a, that's a very important lesson to learn. The second uh, issue related to that is that um, even in the in the uh, the kind of proposals that, that are in place in order to uh, uh, you know start this process uh, of renegotiation renegotiation of the NAFTA or NAFTA updating uh, the way you would like to call it. It is interesting that there are many TPP proposals on the table, which brings back to the question, early question that is, uh, was, was raised at the beginning, which was, what is the future of the TPP? And, and somehow, while the TPP is being, I mean, first, the 11 countries are trying to, to keep essentially what was negotiated in place, um, but the, the influence of TPP would any, in terms of rulemaking is clearly something that would remain for many years independently of of, uh, of what, uh, what will happen with the, with the TPP without the membership of the United States. The influence in terms of rulemaking is going to be very, very important. Thank you. I think someone did ask the question, uh, what is the attitude of, uh, in India on this TPP? Now, having uh, been looking at TPP, for some time, I have come to the conclusion that in India, no tears are likely to be shed on the demise of TPP, either in the industry or in the government. And uh, you know, one of the strongest proposal, uh, provisions in the erstwhile TPP uh, agreement was on investment. And uh, you, you know that uh, India is uh, India remains opposed to anything multilateral uh, on a, a multilaterally agreed investment agreement type, type of a thing. Right from this days of the Singapore meeting of the WTO, it has been opposed. Even today, it is opposed. In fact, uh, two weeks back, a crisis was caused in the WTO because India opposed the investment uh, uh, proposal being put even on the agenda of the WTO uh, General Council. So uh, on that, I think uh, you heard uh, Mr. Garg uh, saying that uh, uh, this is something that uh, we would not like to uh, go with, that is, uh, multilateral agreement on investment because it perhaps takes away the, the uh, flexibility that uh, is there with the government on some issues relating to uh, uh, investment, which to some extent you retain in the BITs. Yes, Suman. Almost at the end of the session. So, um, you know, there is a formulation out, of there, uh, out there which is supported by the Pew results that Matthias reported, which is that since, for maybe the wrong reasons, poorly managed domestic politics, technology, the previous votaries of, as it were, the liberal order are flagging, uh, those who have benefited might wish to take on the burden, and that certainly has been the language that China has been articulating, language, I don't know about reality, ever since uh, President Xi's Davos speech. Now, uh, you know, one could argue, I don't know as much about trade as, as the people on the panel, that, uh, you know, um, that uh, trade agreements and trade policy is like a bicycle. You, you need to keep, uh, you need to keep pedaling or you fall off. Now, are we in the business of being, India now, being sort of uh, uh, high wire uh, 
Cirque du Soleil people who want to be static on the high wire uh, and not want to move back or forward? I mean, do we want, uh, is it your sense that we want a system that is frozen in amber as what we are? Do we want to go backwards? Or do we may want to make common cause with, say, the Chinese and, and others who benefited from trade to be supporters of the reconstruction or the establishment of new standards. Um, I mean, the representative of the government is constrained. Uh, you're no longer in government. Could you give us an assessment of both the views of this government and also, in a sense, the views of the trade establishment more broadly in India? Would you like to say something? Well, in an investment agreement, what is keeping, giving deep disquiet, uh, not only in India, but in uh, several member countries of the European Union also, is uh, something to which uh, Mr. Garg referred, that is the ISDS, Investor State Dispute Settlement. Uh, now, that is something that uh, in a country like India is going to be very difficult. Uh, and uh, uh, only that uh, is enough uh, to uh, get a veto from government of India on any such proposal on a multilateral agreement. But uh, my own view is that uh, there should not be a, a, a a situation in which we don't even discuss this. In any case, in the context of uh, both uh, uh, the uh, two uh, big uh, uh, agreements uh, of, for an FTA that we are at present discussing, that is uh, EU uh, India and Canada India, I think these issues are being raised and it is certainly being discussed. So there is no harm in discussing them multilaterally. I mean, at present, the situation is that uh, uh, we are not even uh, open to discussing the thing uh, uh, multilaterally. Uh, so much so that uh, the agenda uh, for a general council meeting in the WTO was blocked because investment facilitation was put on it. So I think we have come to the end of the session and thank you very much and let us uh, uh, thank the panelists uh, with some applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, panelists. Now we are breaking for 15 minutes and we'll resume at 11.15 sharp. Thank you.